Good morning. I would like to begin today by welcoming all of you to our 2020 Memorial Day Remembrance Program. While I and our Memorial Day Parade Committee members had hoped and planned for a larger, town-involved event, the circumstances related to the COVID-19 outbreak, coupled with the state and county social distancing guidelines, as well as crowd size mandates have forced us to alter our plans. Given Oxford Borough's historical precedence, and more importantly, the meaning and spirit of Memorial Day as a whole, we felt that the Remembrance Program must go forward. So today, we try something new. Utilizing technology and a little perseverance, we will honor our traditions and remember those brave men and women who gave all so that we may have everything. As mayor of this great borough, I ask all of those here today and all of you watching this production from afar to please join me in thanking the fallen for their sacrifice and to reflect on the true cost of freedom. Thank you, please enjoy the program, and I hope you remain well. I'd like to call Bob Stewart, local veteran, to begin the program. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good morning, I'd like to welcome you to our version of the Oxford Memorial Day ceremony. Uh, like the Mayor said, with uh, the COVID-19 uh, conditions, uh, this is gonna be the next best thing that we can do. Um, would like to extend a thank you for all the front frontline workers uh, for the outstanding job they are doing. And hopefully this video finds you all well and uh, we'll go on with the, the program. Uh, for right now, now I'd like to introduce uh, Pastor Kiefer from the Oxford United Methodist Church to give an invocation. On this Memorial Day, I am thankful for the sacrifice so many throughout our history have made, for the men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice, and for their families who have had to carry on without them. This is a sacrifice that is easy to forget. For those who have it, freedom is like oxygen. It's something that we just have. Many will not understand how precious either oxygen or freedom is until they risk having either taken away. There are encroachments being made on human freedoms around the world right now by those who think they know better than those who are living their own individual lives. But that is a conversation for another time. Today, I am here to remember a sacrifice that was made for me and a debt that I can never repay. Today, I pray for the God of heaven to bless the families of those who have lost loved ones while serving our great nation. I pray for him to bless and comfort the walking wounded who are still among us and bless their families as well. It is also my prayer that we remember their sacrifice and the precious gift of freedom that we have every day, not just one day of the year or when we are in danger of having those freedoms taken away. May we remember, bless, and honor our veterans, especially those who gave their all for the freedoms that we enjoy. Amen. Detail, action, hut, what? O. F. Right. Face. Prepare fire. Aim. Fire. Aim. Fire. Aim. Fire. Cease fire. F. Lay off. Face. Present on!
Hello, my name is Jessica Stewart. I'm a senior at Oxford High School, and I am honored today to be reading the Gettysburg Address. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, cannot consecrate, we cannot hollow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here and have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note, nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who have fought here have thus so far nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that whom these honored dead, we take the increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from this earth. My name is Marie Miller, a senior at Oxford Area High School, and I am pleased to have the honor of reading General Logan's orders. The 30th day of May, 1868, is designated for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion, and whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, and hamlet churchyard in the land. In this observance, no form of, or, of ceremony is prescribed, but posts and comrades will in their own way arrange such fitting services and testimonials of respect as circumstances may permit. We are organized comrades, as our regulations tell us, for the purpose, among other things, of preserving and strengthening those kind and fraternal feelings which have bound together the soldiers, sailors, and Marines who united to suppress the late rebellion. What can aid more to assure this result than cherishing tenderly the memory of our heroic dead, who made their breasts a barricade between our country and its foes? Their soldier lives were the reveille of freedom to a race in chains, and their deaths the tattoo of rebellious tyranny in arms. We should guard their graves with sacred vigilance. All that the consecrated wealth and the taste of the nation can add to their adornment and security is but fitting tribute to the memory of her slain defenders. Let no wanton foot tread rudely on such hallowed grounds. Let pleasant paths invite the coming and going of reverent visitors and fond mourners. Let no vandalism of avarice or neglect, no ravages of time testify to the present or to the coming generations that we have forgotten as a people the cost of a free and undivided republic. If other eyes grow dull, other hands slack, and other hearts cold in the solemn trust, ours shall keep it well as long as the light and warmth of life remain in us. Let us then, at time appointed, gather around their sacred remains and garland the passionless mounds above them with the choicest flowers of springtime. Let us raise above them the dear old flag they saved from dishonor. Let us in this solemn presence renew our pledges to aid and assist those whom they have left among us as a sacred charge upon a nation's gratitude, the soldiers and sailors, widow and orphan. It is the purpose of the commander in chief to inaugurate this observance with the hope that it will be kept up from year to year while a survivor of the war remains to honor the memory of his departed comrades. He earnestly desires the public press to lend its friendly aid in bringing to the notice of comrades in all parts of the country in time for simultaneous compliance therewith. Department commanders will use efforts to make this order effective by order of John A. Logan, Commander in Chief.
United States Marine Corps, Purple Heart, September 6, 2004. Friends, let us gather together and place ourselves before God as we offer a closing prayer. Heavenly Father, as our nation pauses today to remember those in the military who have given their lives for the freedoms we enjoy, we pray that you would have us all look to you for strength, comfort, and guidance. We ask that you be with all who serve in our armed forces. Bless them and their families. Grant your loving protection, we pray. Let peace prevail among all nations, O God, and especially let your mercy rest upon our land, even as we knowledge today with thanksgiving your past goodness on this country. As it is your will, we pray that you preserve the lives of the men and women in uniform as they defend our citizenry, and most of all, we pray that you will turn the hearts of all of us, military and civilian, to your holy word, for where we find the true peace for our souls that passes all understanding. Help us to be repentant when we stray. Move us to know, to accept, and to treasure your saving grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, and your beloved Son, we offer this prayer and we pray for peace and hope for eternity. We ask this in your holy and precious name. Amen.